Hey folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to Quilly Teen Feels Like Playing Baldur's Gate. So we are currently Let's Playing some Baldur's Gate. It's been a long time since I played. I did a video a little while ago when Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition came out. I um, never finished that playthrough, and so I'm going to start a, a fresh one here. Um, Baldur's Gate is a very, 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 very long game. Uh, this Let's Play may not get completed, so I'm going to apologize for that right away. You be prepared for that, but we're going to dabble with it for at least a little while and see exactly how it goes. This is the Enhanced Edition, which is quite cool because, A, first of all, they uh, bring in a lot of the improvements from Baldur's Gate 2, backporting it to Baldur's Gate 1, and add some more things on top of that, plus just being easier to install and run on modern computers, which is a lovely, lovely thing. We're going to start a new game over here. Um, when I did play Baldur's Gate way in the past, like when it originally came out, I think I did a playthrough as a wizard, maybe? I think as a wizard, um, and I think a, a one as sort of a pure fighter. Um, I'm going to play as one of the more sort of strong, what people consider to be relatively strong composition for Baldur's Gate, um, of which there are sort of two schools of thought, and both involve using multiple classes. Now, if you've played more modern versions of D&D, multi-classing in modern versions of D&D work nothing like they used to in 2nd edition, which is what this is based on. Um, in 2nd edition, which is what Baldur's Gate runs, there's two different ways to get multiple classes. If you are human, and only a human, you can do something called dual classing, where basically you're one class for a while, and then you switch completely to a brand new class, effectively, starting over from level 1 in that class, which means at that point you can level up quite quickly, because the XP to level up at level 1 is, is very low. And then when your new class gets to the same level as your first class, then you'll, you've got the benefit of both classes forever, but you keep leveling up only in your new class. You've sort of switched, it just happens that you still get to call on these other weird abilities. And then if you're not human, you get to do something called multi-classing, which actually involves starting the game as multiple classes simultaneously and leveling them up all at the same time by splitting XP between them. Um, which sounds like, like, if I go Mage, or, yeah, Mage, Fighter, Thief, or Fighter, Mage, Thief, however they've got them listed, um, which is what I'm going to do here, it sounds like you might be, like, one-third the level of all your companions, but it's not true. Because of the way that XP costs scale up, you're really only going to be, like, one level behind your companions, but in three classes simultaneously, which is kind of interesting. Your hit points are average, but otherwise you just get the best part of every single class. So we're going to roll this up as a... I'm going to take this portrait. Um, we are going to roll this up as a half-elf. Both elves and half-elves can be uh, fighter, mage, thieves. Um, elves are quite nice because they do get plus one to hit with both short swords and long swords, which is really, really, really good. Uh, and plus one to dexterity, which is nice, but they get minus one to constitution, and they don't like that. Half-elf has access to the exact same multi-class, but doesn't get the penalty to constitution. They don't get the, some of the other benefits, but I like constitution, so I'm going to go there. So my class is going to be multi-class, fighter, mage, thief over here. Um, which is really cool. One of the things you can do in Baldur's Gate, by the way, whenever you get experience points from, say, killing monsters or whatever, it's divided upon, um, among your entire party, and normally you have six people in your party. But you can play Baldur's Gate solo, um, and then you would get all the XP on your one character. Again, because of the way sort of things scale up, you're not going to be, like, six times ahead of level. Of, of everything in the game, but you will be substantially ahead of the content. And if you're playing something like Mage, Fighter Mage Thief, where you've kind of got access to all the things, it's quite a potent competition, uh, composition. I'm not going to do that here. I might not run with a full six party. I might do something like four or something like that, or three. I will play it by ear. But anyway, I'm going to do this. Alignment. Uh, we're going to go Chaotic Good, the coolest of all alignments. And ability scores. Okay. So you can re-roll your ability scores as often as you want here. And you can get up with really high amounts, especially if you're going a fighter mage thief like this. You actually probably want a total of like 90 or more. This is uh, new in the enhanced edition, by the way. It used to be you had to count it up to see if you got a pretty good total. Now I'm going to stop at a certain point. Wow, you're only giving me 70s of that? 81? I mean, I've got a sword in 83, right? Recall, yeah, which is not that high really could use some good stats over here. An 83, should have actually compared. I do actually have a guy saved too, that I could just import. Basically this exact class that I played as a test, an 84 isn't bad. What's the strength multiplier? So, strength is weird in second edition. You had this 18 slash something. If you hit 18 in strength, you had the ex extra thing, and then depending on the second number, which was a one to 100, um, you got some extra modifiers. It's not critical because at some point I'll find a book that gives me plus one strength, which will just bring up to a flat 19 and there's no more slashes anymore. Um, I, know, I guess we'll store this anyway. <clears throat> How many times do I want to re-roll? 
Because you can keep doing this forever, and ideally you're looking for like a total of like 90 or so. I should probably just load up my save character where I sort of dabbled with the build. But I wanted to demonstrate the thing. But for this character, we really need very high stats. It's a little bit cheesy. I guess we don't have to go in with perfect stats, but man, oh man, oh man, does it make the game so much more crazy. 84. Let's take a look at what our exceptional strength on this one. No, 41, so that's less good than the other. 82. Gotta not click too fast, because I'll probably click by a really good one. I'm just looking to see when the 8 changes, and I'm sort of pausing for a sec here. 86! Alright. Tell me you've got good exceptional strength. And it won't matter later, but yeah, 40 is not great. But 86, I think we might live with that. Um, so, I want a maxed out constitution. One thing that's worth noting um, is, unless you're a fighter, 16 is the best constitution you ever want. Um, at 16 constitution, you'll get an extra 2 hit points per level. At 17 and 18, you can get plus 3 and plus 4 hit points per level, which is great, but only if you're a fighter. Now, I am a fighter, among other things, so I will get to take advantage of this. Because I'm not a pure fighter, I won't get to specialize my weapons as, as hardcore as a pure fighter does, um, but I will get the extra constitution bonus, which is nice. Now, what do we do with the rest of the stats? I mean, most everyone will probably wants a dexterity of 18 for the bonus to AC, and I'm a wizard, so I really want as much int as possible. So let's say I decide to cap that out too. Do I want to roll with this kind of setup? I mean, do I just want to tank my charisma completely? <clears throat> it doesn't matter too much, except for prices in shops. And there are some things that you can get to try to counter that. I mean, this is pretty power gamey, but it's not too bad. Um, I know that if your character, if you keep playing the character all the way through to Baldur's Gate 2, um, you get access to wish spells. I think you want a high wisdom to really be able to take advantage of that maximum possible. So I'm tempted to do this. It is, you know... A little power gamey, but it's not too bad. Just out of curiosity, I'm going to store that. Let's give a couple extra rolls, just... Okay, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0? No, okay. We'll go with these stats. It's fine. Skills! Okay. So because I'm a thief, I get skill points to distribute. They start at a certain level because of my stats and race, but I get 40 extra points. Uh, generally speaking, the first thing you want to do is max out your move silent, or sorry, your find traps. Find traps is the whole reason that you run a rogue. However, I'm actually going to go and max out my open locks here to start off with. We're going to bring it to 65 because there's a lock I specifically really want to open at the start of the game, and I'm hoping this 65 will allow me to do it. Cross my fingers. Um, and the reason is, I'm going to use a two-weapon build, and I'm going to go with dual-wielding katanas. Katana was not a skill, there were no katanas in, in normal Baldur's Gate, Enhanced Edition does introduce a few. Uh, they're relatively rare, and somewhat difficult to find, but they are in the game. And once you get into Baldur's Gate 2, katanas are quite good. Katanas have a base damage of 1d10, as opposed to 1d8 of longswords, so they do do better damage, which is quite nice. So we're going to go with... Two weapon katana style. We're gonna be like, this is a cheesy build. Like, dual wielding katanas, really, really, really. Two weapon, double katana. Excellent. Uh, we get to pick our level one spells because we're an, a mage. I'm gonna get a find familiar and identify. That's basically our mage, we're gonna be playing our mage mostly as a fighter uh, for the at least the very first few levels. Uh, we're gonna be wearing heavy armor and therefore we are not going to be casting spells in combat. So I'm taking out of combat spells. Identify, very handy to be able to identify what a magic item is. And find familiar, which is quite cool because we can summon a familiar, which gives us more hit points to play with. So we're going to definitely start with that. Done, and we're going to memorize find familiar to start off with um, so that we can cast it right away at the start of the game. Appearance, we can change some of our, our color here. Tell you what, let me try to match um, this dude over here, something like that. Yeah, sort of a, a bit more of a... A bit of built-in golden trim. Well, there's, like, I guess, the leathery bits and then a lighter red. Yeah, it looks good. We're going to be wearing some different armor and stuff, so our look will change. And what voice do I want? Let's give them a right thrashing. Well, of course. Yeah, sure, that's fine. And name, we are going to be, I don't know, Quillicus. I don't know, that sounds, that sounds fantasy-ish, right? We're going to accept. Nestled atop the cliffs that rise from the Sword Coast, 
the Citadel of Candlekeep houses the finest and most comprehensive collection of writings on the face of Farron. It is an imposing fortress, <laughs> kept in strict isolation from the intrigues that occasionally plague the rest of the Forgotten Realms. It is secluded, highly regimented, and it is home. <clears throat> Within these hallowed halls of knowledge, your story begins. You have spent most of your 20 years of life within this keep's austere walls, under the tutelage of the sage Gorion. Acting as your father, he has raised you on a thousand tales of heroes and monsters, lovers and infidels, battles and tragedies. However, one story was always left untold, that of your true heritage. Dun, dun, dun. You have been told that you are an orphan, but your past is largely unknown. Lately, Gorion has been growing distant from you, as if some grave matter weighs heavily on his heart. You have asked about his concerns as gently as possible, but your queries have been in vain. Your sole comfort is the knowledge that he is a wise man, and you know he will tell you when the time is right. Nonetheless, his silence is troubling, and you cannot help but feel that something is terribly wrong. Today, <clears throat> Gorion has appeared more agitated than ever. And now he has uncharacteristically interrupted your chores in the middle of the day. Imparting hurried instructions for you to equip yourself for travel, he has handed you what gold he can spare, but given no clue as to why. Nevertheless, you now stand before the Candlekeep Inn, ready to purchase what you need for an unplanned and unexpected journey. Excellent. <clears throat> We're going to try to go through the... Um the starting area relatively quickly of Candlekeep, just because there's a lot of little tutorial-y things. There's lots of stuff you can get, and it's pretty awesome, but we're going to try not to mess with that. Uh, is, like, cue the quick save key? Yes. Nice. Excellent. <clears throat> so here's me, sitting in red. Ooh, those lo-fi graphics. Just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful stuff. <clears throat> um, I can go and open my inventory. All I've got is a staff, and otherwise I'm not wearing any particular piece of armor or anything. Uh, I would like to start by casting <clears throat> my fine familiar spell. Boom! <clears throat> what did I get? I got some sort of critter. Fairy dragon. Excellent. Now, I can... May I, be of assistance? I can put this thing away, can I? Let's talk to my familiar. I have but to ask. There we go, we can play with it, ask it how it's doing. Um, but yes, I want to pick you up and put you in my pack where it's a bit safer. As you wish, my lord. Oh, I love it. Um, so this uh, this critter is going to take up one of my inventory slots for the rest of the game. But by being here, it means that it can't be damaged or killed in combat, which is awfully nice. And it is giving me half of its hit points to me. Like, if it was out, it could attack a little bit, it could cast some spells and do things, which is pretty cool. Um, but I don't want to micromanage a familiar, so I've just gained a whole bunch of hit points um, because of uh, this familiar. I'm pretty sure. We didn't check the stats ahead of time, but I'm pretty sure I get half its hit points. So there we go. Power game on already. Um, I'm going to change my memorizations for tomorrow. I do not want to memorize another fine familiar. We'll just memorize, identify, and that'll be good and plenty. All right. Let's go into the inn. Man, this inn's as clean as an elven arse. My hotel's as clean as an elven arse. That's what I was just saying. Well, hello there, young one. Come to visit your old panel, Winthrop, have we? Well, don't forget the 10,000 gold piece book entrance fee is per Candlekeep's custom. Don't you know? Oh, I fear I do not have that kind of entry fee with me. I suppose I shall return when I do. Haha. <laughs> Charming child you always were, but I fear you lack the sense of humor your father and I share. And know you're welcome here as always, yada, yada, yada. Um, so, yeah, what do you have in your shop? Well, it's an inn, so we can rent a room, which we're not going to do. And then there's some goods that we can purchase. In particular, what I want to be able to purchase, if I can, is this katana. It costs 750 gold pieces. I have 80. Can we do something about this? Well, we are a thief. So what we can do, and I don't know if this is going to work out, but we're going to do our best, is I can start, like, looting some stuff. Let's uh, use my thieving tools and pick this lock. Excellent. 18 more gold and a couple of scrolls, an armor scroll and an infravision scroll. That's good. Unfortunately, Garin does not buy scrolls, so that doesn't help our finances. Um, I'm pretty sure you can... Oops, that's not what I want to do. I'm pretty sure you can loot from anything. Um, but if a pick lock, if I do a lock picking in front of people, then I can get alerted. But this should be fine. We're going to grab a dagger. Maybe we can sell that. Talk to this puff. No time to chit-chat. 
Um, <clears throat> oh, yes, darling, most standoffish. Uh, you brought a lot of uh, jewelry with you, didn't you? All right, all right, all right. So, um, oh, I guess we can talk with, um, what's his name? Firebird. Firebeard. So hard to find. Firebead! Oh, Elven hair. Yes, uh, you left an identify scroll in Tethril and the inner grounds. You should be done examining it, so if you could fetch it for me, that'd be grateful. Okay, yes, that'd be fine. I can totally get your scroll for you. I may or may not return it. I haven't decided yet. Well, I guess I can cast identify, so I don't I need yours. To ask. All right, so let's loot some more stuff. Uh, these guys are asleep, so it should be fine. We're going to do some more quick saving, just in case anything horrible happens. I could try to pickpocket him, but I don't have much in the way of pickpocketing skills, so I'll likely just get caught. This is locked, but there's no witnesses, so let's unlock it and loot a necklace. Excellent. Uh, this is locked, but this guy's asleep, so it should be fine. And I'll keep quick saving here. The last thing I want to do is script the game right now. We got a potion. What kind of potion is that? Potion of clarity. What does that do? Ah, prevents feeble mindedness, confusion, fear, and charm for one hour. All right, probably we'll sell it, but you know, because I'm bad about not actually using my potions ever. Uh, we have a room here with a guy in it, so I don't think if we can just loot it. No, but I don't want to pick it while don't it's here. Touch me, I might catch something. Uh, I'm not going to hold this guy up. That would be probably bad. I don't remember what this would do, but I'm assuming it's bad. Hey, you know who are you? Yeah, Christian of Waterdeep, yada, 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 okay. You guys can always pause and reread that if you want. Uh, there's nothing in here. Yeah, I can hold a um, tab and, you know, see anything intractable. Away Hello, nobleman. You, um, no, I'm not going to do that. Simple mistake, watch your words. Okay, here's the big one. <clears throat> this, I don't know if this will work or not. This is locked. It's a very difficult lock to pick. I succeeded. Okay, I wasn't sure if 65 would be enough in lockpicking, but it's got a star sapphire. And the reason this is important is because I believe it'll sell for a thousand bucks, which means it I can buy my katana. You can also steal it from him if you've got like good skills. All right. I would like to sell basically everything you'll buy. I don't care about the dagger, the silver necklace. You won't buy the potion, but you will buy the star sapphire for a thousand bucks. Bam. Awesome. Awesome. So, a fair bit of metagaming here, but that's okay. Uh, another cool build you can do is, um, one of the skills, instead of taking the katana skill, I could have taken the skill, um, in scimitars, which covers scimitars, ninja toes, and wakizashis, I think. Actually, one of these might be a short sword. No, scimitar, wakizashi, ninja toe. So, uh, you got quite a bit of variety there, but we're gonna go with the katana. Excellent. Uh, I'm gonna buy that. Um, I should probably get some armor. I might be able to find some. I could use a shield early on, because I am going to be set up for two-weapon combat. Um, so I have to decide, do I just want to use a shield early on until I get a second katana, or do I just want to wield some other random weapon? I guess I could have held on to that dagger. Tell you what, I won't buy anything. We'll run into something, and I'll wield that in my offhand. Um, it's worth getting a helmet for... Um, to reduce crits. I mean, you'll, you'll run into one pretty soon, but it's only a gold piece, so what the hell. And armor, 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 armor. Probably I should buy it. There's no reason not to just use the most powerful armor you can find, assuming you've got the strength. Uh, full plate, I think, has a strength of 12, so we're going to be fine as soon as we find it. So I guess for now, we'll just use the chain mail, or the splint mail. AC4. Lower AC is better, because it's a second edition, and everything is dumb. So, what the hell, let's go ahead and grab this. I mean, I can probably get some stuff pretty easily, but that's okay. Uh, you do that, and do that, and do that, and I don't think anyone buys the quarterstaff, so we'll just drop it onto the ground, that's fine. Um, and yeah, I'll sell these scrolls as soon as I get a chance. I have, inf I, I have infrusion, because I'm a half-elf, and I can wear armor, so I don't need the armor scroll. I can write this to my book. Actually, let's do that. Boom, there we go. So we'll permanently have access to it in our spellbook. Really don't need it for vision, but spells are like Pokemon. You gotta you gotta catch them all. Um, don't need the potion of clarity in here. So I think that finishes me off in the inn. Now it shall be as you wish. I could go around. There's a lot of little mini quests that I can do in here if I would like. Hello? Right? You need uh, you lost your book, so we can go and find your book. It's hiding in the hay over here. Uh, we can kill some rats. There may be some assassins kicking around. 
so for example, in this room. So these guys will just give me a little bit of info. Yeah. Tutors. Try left clicking on doors. Okay. Let's left click on this door and see what happens. Hello. Hello. My gosh. I'm a ward of Gorion. I am. What can I do for you? You're going to try to kill me? Okay. So I have the auto-pausing set up so that it'll auto-pause when I spot an enemy. It'll also auto-pause if I see a trap, which is pretty handy. All I'm going to do is uh, left-click on you. Or right-click. I, I think left-click. I've got my uh, katana equipped. I think we're just going to go and Let's smack you around. Right <laughs> oh! Um, we crit. We rolled a, national tw a natural 20, so we just exploded him. It shall be as we wish. Giving us a dagger. Let's go ahead and put the dagger in our offhand, which I do by putting it there. That is not available in vanilla uh, Baldur's Gate, by the way. Baldur's Gate 2 it was. But in vanilla Baldur's Gate, um, it meant that rangers were particularly useless. Because one of the big things that rangers have is their ability to dual wield. And they couldn't deal wield in normal Baldur's Gate. But now, with enhanced edition, you can. You can loot anything else that's in here. Locked? Not locked. Um, how come F5 is not hotkeying? Oh, I can't do lockpicking while in heavy armor. Of course. There we go. Um, that's right. How do you uh, set up to find traps? Is this find traps? Yes, it is. Can I do that when I'm wearing heavy armor? Yes, I can. Good. So what I actually want to do... Um, is go customize script because these are sort of AI scripts you can assign to your party members which I will be using extensively because I, I don't want to micromanage my whole party it's fine I'd rather play on a lower difficulty and not micromanage my party um, what I'm going to do is for my own character I'll mostly control my character I'm going to take the thief thief controlled script over here um, which is something new in, in uh, enhanced edition here and it just assumes, like, it doesn't do anything on autopilot, except for one thing. And it'll allow me to either always be searching for traps or always be trying to hide in shadows. Which is kind of cool. And I can always override it manually. So. There you go. Always tries to reset the detecting traps, which works in armor. And that's great. <clears throat> so I had to go with the open locks early on here. Hmm? Oh, um, there's a terrible man in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It shall be as you wish. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Um, so I'm delaying my ability to find traps with perfection by grabbing the open locks there. But this enabled me to start with a katana, which is huge. Plus... I don't like it when I can't get into something. It drives me crazy. So I like being able to open a bunch of chests early on. So that's the book that What's-Her-Name wanted. So we'll go ahead and turn it in for a little bit of experience points. Um, if we completed most things in here, I actually don't think you'd get to level 2. Especially not with a multi-class build like I've got over here. Can I actually see... Yeah. <clears throat> so the level, the XP I get... So I just have um, just 30 XP. And I don't remember if it gets split here. Like, would I have earned 90 at this point? I suppose I would have, yeah. So it gets split in all three. What's interesting, again, this is a second edition remnant, is not every class levels at the same rate. So I'll get my thief level first, then I'll get a fighter level, then I'll get my mage level, which is kind of weird. And it's just because, I don't know, they scale differently, so they XP differently, which is kind of a neat thing to see happen. So again, we'll get our second level very delayed, even if I finish everything in here, so it's probably not worth it. Hello there. There we go. Let's check the XP count now. Yep, yeah, get split. So does it stop detecting traps when I move? Or no? There was something else going on. Okay, because we are detecting traps properly. Excellent. Um, so there's plenty of stuff that you can do in Candlekeep. And if you haven't played uh, Baldur's Gate before, I definitely recommend that you go and do it. Because there's, there's just a lot of good stuff. In particular, if you happen to be playing a character with an 18 charisma, um, you can get yourself a, what, like a plus one weapon um, for one of the quests in here. If I try to do it, I think I get five gold from it. So it's hardly worth bothering with. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and go find Gorion. We're going to leave Candlekeep. Because I don't think there's anything I'm missing. Plus, I already, you know, I got my katana and the armor. Like, I got a thousand starting gold. Um, that is way more stuff than I'm supposed to have at this point. So I think we're okay. Hello, Imwin. Um, 
sorry I can't chat today. My father, father, blah, 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 blah. Um, alright, I'll ask you if you can come with us. They don't really need a thief, but, you know, whatever. We can get you to do a class in the mage, I think, and that'll be okay. Or maybe you already are, I don't remember. Yes, I'm ready to go. We don't need to know any more story, right? Let's just go out in the world and start murdering things. If we ever become separated, it is imperative that you make your way to the Friendly Arm Inn. There you will meet Khalid and Jahira. They have long been my friends, and you can trust them. Trust them to be annoying. You're gonna give me a buff. I'm gonna go out into the wilderness. <clears throat> and what will happen? The night can only get worse, so we must find shelter soon. Don't worry. I'll explain everything as soon as there is time. Right, because explaining things now would be stupid, right? Wait, there is something wrong. We are in an ambush. Prepare yourself. You're perceptive for an old man. You know why I'm here. Hand over your ward and no one will be hurt. If you resist, it shall be a waste of your life. You're a fool if you believe I would trust your benevolence. Step aside and you and your lackeys will be unhurt. I am sorry that you feel that way, old man. This is one of the like, most distinctive lines I always remember from playing this game. My spleen! My spleen! I need that for immunity or something. Ah, uh, Gorion. Beating the crap out of these guys pretty effectively. Fireball spells, very nice. Mirror image, doing pretty well for you, but unfortunately, you can only do so much. The dawn is especially cruel this morning. You awake with the realization that you have not been living some horrible dream. Ambushed, you saw Gorion cut down before your eyes. And even his powerful magic could not stop the onslaught. It was his wish that you flee, but that does not remove the feeling of helplessness that now overwhelms you. Hand over your ward, the armored fiend had said. He was after you and you alone, but why? If only Gorion had given some clue. Seriously. But now you are alone and lost. Candlekeep is near, but you will find no quarter there. The readers pay for their serenity with rather draconian entry rules, and without Gorion's influence, their doors will remain closed. You will not last long on your own with your meager equipment. Dude, I have a Perhaps katana worth 750 some gold. The friends Gorion mentioned, <laughs> the ones at the friendly arm. Indeed. Hey, uh, it's me, Emmowen. <sighs> not long, not alone long at all. All right. So, Imwen has joined us. She is currently a thief, which is kind of redundant with uh, my party right now. But, uh, when we do level her up, we can do a classer because she's human. And I think a lot of people tend to do a classer into a spellcaster. We'll see how it goes. We'll play that one by ear. We may or may not keep her around. She's got great stats, though. Um, can't complain about that. What kind of gear did you bring with you? I don't remember. You've got uh, some healing potions, right? Yeah! So, let me give a couple of those to myself. Um, we've got a Wand of Magic Missiles, too. Which, um, I'll grab. I'm mostly going to be meleeing. She's mostly going to be shooting her bow. But, um, I might want the option of zapping something with a wand from time to time, so that'll be okay. Should I be putting the Warhammer in the backhand? One-handed, 1d4, plus 1, 1d4. Yeah, plus this gives me some bludgeoning weapon, some bludgeoning damage, which I kind of like. Um, Imwin, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a backup dagger, although use that primarily, and I'm gonna set your script to just ranged, basically. Attack enemy he sees with missile weapon most proficient with, he'll try to keep his distance from enemies, but if he's attacked in melee combat, he'll switch to a melee weapon, which is fine. I don't think we need to give you any thief-specific script at all. Um, well, I say that. I guess if we did give you that, you'd probably do trap checking and things, right? Um, thief aggressive with the backstab, no. Thief defensive. So, oh, thief range attack. Will attack any enemy he sees, most with the missile weapon he's most proficient with. If he's attacked, he'll switch to melee weapons. While not in combat, the thief will attempt to try find traps. Excellent. You do that one. That's going to be perfectly fine. All right. And Imwin's in Tekken Traps. Good. 
So we're going to put a cut in here. When we get back, we're going to go ahead and find the spot of the battle with Garin. We've got some bodies to loot there. And then, yeah, re relatively quickly, we'll make our way to the friendly arms in. Um, there is something to be said about clearing these maps, though, and getting extra level up. So we'll see exactly what we can do. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.